Greetings everyone, it is me, Atari HMB, and today is a video going into even more depth on infinite speed, and why I said it's technically faster than a measurable speed. Now at the same time, I want to keep this concise, yet very detailed, compared to the last video we did before, and I'm going to be going over the tiering system, specifically on how we can introduce newer categories in order to somewhat help differentiate and keep it a lot more understandable when we're mentioning these different feats, and I'll go over into examples as to why I'm doing this in the first place. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. Now, as we stated in the last video, we know that speed is distance over time, However, I think the problem that may have occurred as to why people think infinite speed is inferior to a measurable speed has to do with how they're interpreting infinite speed. Because the way I interpret infinite speed is under a completely different theory than what the versus battle and majority of other individuals do. So allow me to explain what I mean by that theory. Now you see, typically people like to record things via Planck time because Planck time is generally the unit of measurement of how long it takes for a photon to particularly move, thus the speed of light, thus comes in the interpretation. However, Planck time is more so the lowest recorded measurement of time and not the actual absolute lowest of measurable time, just the most that we've recorded and will assert that can be done. However, when you use the categories the Versus Battle Wiki uses, which sometimes ignores relativity for the sake of fiction, you have to account for the fact that the uncountable infinity, such as 0 0.000000, etc., how long does that go on to until we get to the smallest unit or measurement of time? It's an infinitesimal amount. Because of that, we can't necessarily say that infinite speed is being able to move anywhere within a certain amount of time. To give you an example, the Versus Battle Wiki believes that infinite speed is able to travel anywhere instantly or move an infinite distance within a finite amount of time. Teleportation does not count. And so when you really look at it that way, is it actually infinite speed? Well, I'll tell you this, it wasn't the infinite speed I was talking about. Now you might be wondering, what do you mean infinite speed you weren't talking about? There's only one definition, right? Well, not necessarily. In fact, theoretically, infinite speed should be able to move an infinite distance in zero time. You see, that definition of infinite speed is something else. That's why I said true infinite speed. And I'll go ahead and give you an example of what I mean. This is white. He's able to move an infinite distance, but of course, within a finite frame of time. However small that time frame may be, he still was able to move infinite distance, but at the cost of being some level of infinitesimal amount of time. Now, this is black. Black is able to move a finite or infinite amount of distance within zero time. Yes, zero time. There's no infinitesimal amount or anything about it. It's completely at zero. And the amount of the uncountable infinity it takes to get to there is essentially going to be zero regardless. Because at this level of speed, he could pretty much travel the same distance white did, but go back and forth and beat white at zero time. This is true infinite speed, the way I was going about it in the definition of the last video. And the point I want to make with this speed is that it takes absolutely zero time, and even some calculators kind of give you the same aspect or notion of that. Of course, this is theoretical, as some other people will have different interpretations, but utilizing this theory, it creates somewhat of a paradox when it comes to other speeds, such as how would this look to a higher dimensional being? Well, as you could see, the higher dimensional being will probably view them as nothing or not moving at all, but when they look at the present timeline, they can see that this guy can technically cover every space and point in the entire universe, all within zero time. Even if someone like Esdef were to freeze time, it may have the appearance to be infinite speed to a, well, regular three-dimensional being because she completely froze all of space-time. However, to a being with this level of infinite speed, these level of time hacks wouldn't even work, not because they're just hacks, but in general, his speed is so fast that even if things were matched down to zero, he would still be able to cover pretty much any point in distance that he needs to within zero time. It creates a paradoxical question more than anything rather than giving a true defined answer. 
it's kind of the same paradoxical point you get to when you're trying to find out the difference between infinite dimensional or a low outerversal being. Is there really that much of a difference in AP when you break down the fact that infinity at this point keeps transcending itself because an infinite dimensional being is infinitely greater than an infinite dimensional being and so on and so forth because no matter how much you divide their power it will always be infinite. Even 1% of this speed is still infinite. But if you use the versus battle definition, 1% of that speed, though it may be infinite, could just increase the finite amount of time they traveled. For example, if a character can move somewhere at one second, but travel infinite distance, well, what happens if we deal with that by 10% lower their speed? In theory, would it really decrease their speed at all? Well, based on saying it's a finite amount of time, what if you just say that, well, that would mean it would take them 1.1 second. So if they can still be impacted by finite numbers, it's not a level of true infinite speed. As a result, I'd like to say that this speed category that I'm speaking of is something I would categorize or use a buzzword as infinite speed plus. That's because it is a level of infinite speed, but it is interpreted completely different under the assumption that it takes zero time. Now, this is not to be confused with inaccessible speed alone. Rather, this is a level of speed that grants you a lot of abilities by proxy. Basically, because you can be at any point in the entire universe at any time, and you can pretty much move anywhere within zero seconds, so regardless if someone freezes time, you will automatically have that inaccessible speed based on just the fact that you are true infinite speed. And the way I like to look at it is this because infinity more than often not breaks mathematics. So of course it will break the mathematic formula most people like to use. Now this part I wanna break down but keep it relatively simple. Immeasurable speed is very simple. It's basically the ability to not measure speed because there really is no distance or no time to really measure. Thus you can't really have any way to actually come to a proper conclusion, but I do want to say I'd like to see if we had two types of immeasurable speed. The reason I'm saying this is because there are a lot of characters who fit the bill for immeasurable speed because there are a lot of characters who have went beyond space time and have been able to do it relatively easily. Infinite Zamasu is one of those people. But you see, because an immeasurable speed being will typically treat a temporal timeline as if it's relatively spatial and walk along the axis and because higher dimensionality just allows different ranges of motion it's more so a state of being rather than a flat out superior level of speed i mean it's only superior in the aspect of how it views the lower dimensions from its perspective but again this is even applicable to even levels of attack potency Take for example Kuwabara. Though his dimensional sword doesn't have the range, it can technically hurt a regular 3A universal being, because no matter how good their durability is, he just bypasses all of that by cutting the strings or the dimensions itself in general. But again, this is more so of a shortcut rather than the actual raw attack potency by itself required to actually do damage. Same thing when it comes to immeasurable speed. It's more so of a shortcut by leaping outside of time and it doesn't necessarily mean that being has any more special speed categories above the lower realm, especially if you hit the infinite speed plus, which as we can see in this image with hit, for example, he could skip time and therefore can technically move infinite speed in a 3D level because he can get somewhere. But when he returns back, his actual speed is nowhere near even close to the speed he can cheat with time skip. As you can see, time manipulation is essentially cheating speed, and immeasurable speed, in a sense, is kind of the same thing. Of course, if we're comparing it to a three-dimensional plane only. Of course, higher dimensional beings have higher ranges of motion, and thus, if there are higher temporalities, that is when their speeds will be greater, thus the category immeasurable speed plus. A being like this could travel back and forth in time, but instead of just being able to travel back and forth in time like a normal immeasurable speed being will doing, 
the way I look at it is an immeasurable plus speed being can travel eternity, which is infinite time, going to any point of time and space or even by passing it. You want another example? Let's look at when Trunks and the others were traveling in the time machine. Of course, they were able to have a small conversation during time travel. It wasn't immediately instant. And thus, although their infinite speed compared to anyone else existing in the timelines, once they were outside of the timeline, of course, there was, I guess you could say, some higher temporality of but compared to the beings who within <laughs> no time at all could get to the edge of eternity, meaning they can get to the exact end of time because eternity is essentially outside of time. They could step on the edge of all of eternity, which is the infinite ending of time and that may also include the beginning. This is immeasurable speed plus, in my opinion, and I think it's very important to differentiate the difference between the two because like I've said, there are many characters who can cheat and technically activate immeasurable speed, but they themselves aren't necessarily faster. And by doing this, it gives us a level of different hierarchies to kind of understand what types of immeasurable speed these characters have, and rather or not they're really accessing these speeds through sheer speed and ability alone and transcendency or if they're really just transcending and that's it by the same definition that's like assuming 5d being can automatically be 5d plus or multiverse plus when in reality being able to go outside of time doesn't mean you can necessarily destroy every single probability plane an infinite parallel world within itself that's not that at all but essentially the way i look at it is this Infinite speed is pretty much the versus battle definition and what many others agree to. Same with inaccessible. Immeasurable speed will stay the same because it pretty much grants you accessibility to negative time, being able to travel back in time, and move forward in time and pretty much free range around the timeline. Infinite speed doesn't have the same range of motion and freedom that immeasurable speed has, but infinite speed plus in that category still can access every single point of the universe in zero time and as well as possibly even travel outside of the universe. But again, it throws into a lot of what if questions and it really gets into a somewhat gray area about what is truly technically faster other than just existing outside of time. I mean, by that definition, it's like, hey, I have infinite speed or infinite strength as a three dimensional being but you can only bench press, I don't know, or your only wall level. But if I put you in a fourth dimensional realm, yeah, you're infinitely stronger than me, but only because you're in the fourth dimensional realm, not because you're necessarily stronger than me. Because if I transcend there up with you, I'm still infinitely stronger than you. And that's kind of like what I'm talking about. It's like how you can't say a 5D being is guaranteed the battle against a lower 3D being. That's not how it always works. There are a lot of questions, how the fiction interprets those 5D beings, how the fiction interprets those speeds, like Joshi Mamora's light speed being an infinite speed for some reason, but that's just how they work. That's how they interpret it because they use relativity, but not every other fiction uses relativity. Some fictions use his astral planes for the fifth dimension and some like DC or Marvel for say, use the fifth dimension as something more arbitrary or abstract to some degree. So in that case, we have to really pay attention and look at it from a case by case basis. But I do think that this list should probably be a little bit more, you know, upgraded or with a little bit more flexibility. By having this flexibility, it allows us to gauge where different characters scale at and doesn't allow us to just automatically give someone the ca title or category because, oh, I'm a measurable speed, I'm faster than infinite speed. It's like, not necessarily because if I can move at any point in anywhere in space before zero even happens, you can't even freeze me in time. And also I can probably hit you an infinite number of times within zero seconds as well. There's so many advantages to having that infinite plus speed that people are kind of undermining. And I think it is important to have this level of flexibility when dealing with different fictions, with different theories, and also different physics and different properties and all. That's the key of having an algorithm. You want to be able to account for other fictions that may have different interpretations. And that's overall why I decided to do this video to further give an explanation as to why I think what I think and as well as to introduce a different tiering category or different interpretation about how we may go about speed tiering. 
course, it's always going to be left up for the room of interpretation. And this is not a falsifiable video. It is a completely going to have some flaws in it. I understand that just as the versus battle formulas have flaws in it and just as many other human errors have flaws. We're only limited to our egocentrism and what I can pretty much expel and articulate to you guys. But overall, that's pretty much everything I have to say about this topic. And again, I hope this video will pretty much craved everything else into a more understandable way. And although I wanted it to be concise and I know it's a bit long, again, I hope you understand exactly what I'm talking about. And maybe we can have an agreement where, you know, we acknowledge immeasurable speed is faster than infinite speed normally or baseline infinite speed, but we can't always guarantee it will be faster than infinite speed plus just because of the way the properties of those speeds really work. Anyway, this has been Atari HMB. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and support me on Patreon once again. And this is Atari HMB, and I am signing off. Peace.